So I'm experimenting with some lighting. I put a lamp right by the camera. My skin's kind of glowing a little. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Hey everyone, CW Music Reviews here. I am CWD and this is going to be a music review of the new Avalanches album, Wildflower. Avalanches is the Australian electronic, plunderphonic, experimental group. And this is their first full-length album in about 16 years. This album is following their debut album, which is much celebrated amongst the electronic community since I left you. That thing was a enjoyable experience. I dare say it's actually pretty fantastic. Pretty much Plunderphonics taking to a radical extreme in a way. All these samples like culminating into what sounds like this hour-long, never-ending DJ set. It's not overtly psychedelic, but in implicit nature, it definitely has a really trippy vibe to it. There's a lot to say about this album, and I don't have enough time to do so since I got another album to review, but regardless, it's definitely worth checking out if you're into uh, sample-based music. Sample-based music being something that has become largely influential ever since Since I Left You came out. You had artists like One of Tricks Point Never, Some Flying Lotus, lots of other electronic musicians as well as like DJs and producers like Jay Dilla and Madlib and all these other people that have made the sample a primary craft and something to be respected in the world of art. So at this moment, a new Avalanches album is definitely something that we need right now. It's something that I guess needs sort of an update in terms of the sample-based music industry. So now we have this new album from the Avalanches which has dropped actually a week before its initial release date given the fact that it was leaked and it was set to up Apple Music to be streamed in its entirety. So what do I think of this thing? While I do enjoy it a lot, I definitely do enjoy it a lot, there's a few things that keep me from loving it as much as Since I Left You. But regardless, I do see this album as the spiritual successor. This album's about 21 tracks in length, close to an hour, and this thing is pretty vast in terms of what style it's attempting to go for. It's definitely an album that you're going to want to listen to if you're looking for, once again, trippy music, but instead of it being just implied that this album is rather trippy, this thing is overtly trippy. There is a lot of references of an era of counterculture and, I guess, experimentalism from the 60s, as well as maybe trying to make this sound that was so prominent and so vital for music during the 60s updated for now, as it seems to incorporate rap verses and even hip-hop beats that was on Since I Left You. Add to that, there's a lot less sampling on this album, but regardless, they definitely make the few samples they are implementing quite handy. There's also a lot of collaboration on this album. You got people like Kevin Parker of Tame Impala fame, you got Ariel Pink on this thing, Toro y Moi, Follow John Misty, the list just goes on and on and on and on. But I think the one thing I dig the most about this album is the linear structure to the project. There's definitely a time lapse thing going on. Essentially, if you've seen the movie Birdman where you essentially had this approach to cinematography that had this one camera that felt like it was just done in one shoot as it's just following around certain characters and pretty much just having a clear chronological sequence going to it as it goes from morning to night then morning to night again. That's definitely the case with this album. But to better explain it, let's take a journey or rather a trip through the first new Avalanches album in about 16 years as it explores this 
style of neo-psychedelia and fusing it with their signature plunderphonic sound and see what kind of journey this album takes you through. The Leaves We're Following is the opening track to this album and quite honestly I think my least favorite track given the fact that it is a 15 second cut. It has a Dion McGregor sample but the track is so short that it might as well not have existed. But it does bleed particularly well into the next track, Because I'm Me, which is a pretty great track, and I think Sands is the definitive opener stylistically. You get pretty much these uh, strings in a, like a lo-fi sense as it starts, with these vocals going on that sound pretty abrupt in a way, and pretty lo-fi, as if it's trying to allude back to the Since I Left You days, and I think it's a pretty weird approach. It polarizes me to this day with each listen, and I think that's like a major reservation I have with this track. But then as the track goes on, eventually just bursts into a more better produced and more lavish type of sound that I definitely enjoy a lot. Camp Low has a few rap features on this track, and they do their thing particularly well. It adds a lot of texture and character to this track, certainly, as it eventually transitions into a more cinematic in nature type orchestral feel that I think is pretty cool. But eventually the track just seamlessly transitions into the lead single to this album, Frankie Sinatra. God, this track is amazing. It's probably my favorite track on the whole record. They essentially have fused the sounds of Calypso, Neo Psychedelia, Swing, and Hip Hop into like this one thing of gumbo that it sounds really fantastic. This thing is tuba heavy. This is like one of the few songs in existence that I think has this prominent sampling of the tuba here. There's also some extra horns in the mix as well as maybe some carnival-esque sounds here. And that definitely seems to be the case, given the fact that this actually samples being for the benefit of Mr. Kite by the Beatles. Some of my favorite rappers of all time appear on this track, Danny Brown and MF Doom. Danny seems to have more presence on this track, as well as his album, since he also has another feature. But I think Doom, like, kills it as well, certainly, as he, like, makes this wordplay about being a pirate I.I. -I captain and keeping it irate or keeping it 100. I think it's a really cool verse there. The thing is, the single version actually kind of buried the verses, but the mixing on this track sounds a lot better. The track then kind of just goes into this sample of my favorite things that seems random, but also just continues with the trippy and um, a lot more linear and momentum driving type sound that this album goes for. There's not a single moment here that the transitions to one track after another it gets really awkward or just seems just abrupt or anything of that nature. Like when it goes into Subways, which is another single off of this album. The hook is essentially this catchy like sampling of the song of the same name, Subways by Chandra, and it works particularly well. And it kind of sounds like a subway in that it has this ingenious use of the Doppler effect as it like sounds kind of low-key and quiet some moments before it eventually just drives into louder territory before it like keeps moving again and away from the louder territory gets soft again. I think that's pretty cool. The track Going Home is essentially an extension of this Subway's track, but the track actually adds more vocal sampling here. I do like how it adds more texture to what the previous track is going for it. But regardless, I think this track could have easily been swallowed in by Subways, and Subways could have easily been a pretty interesting five minute cut instead. But regardless, it's not bad, it's just seems a little redundant in a way. Then we get the track If I Was a Folk Star, which has Toro y Moi on vocals here. He definitely adds his signature psychedelic sound to a track that is also pretty overtly psychedelic in nature. There's kind of a cacophonous vibe here as well as like some looped and repeated synth leads that I enjoy a lot. But then we get to like another favorite of mine, Colors. It's lush, it's incredibly lavish. There's this whole wall of effects that sounds like just absolute 
Neo Psychedelia Bliss, as well as all these fluttering synths going on. It's a phenomenal track. Then there's the track Zap, which again, it feels more like an extension of colors, but still I do like the low-key vibe that this track essentially goes for. There's some like pleasantly layered harmonica on this track. There's also some what sounds like some neo-psychedelia ASMR of some kind that I think works particularly well. More specifically when it talks about Hey, you need to wake up. It's time to get some breakfast. Ingeniously guides to the next track, The Noisy Eater. It's got freaking Bismarcky, of all people, on this track, and he's um, munching quite loudly, uh, kind of adding to that noisy eater effect. And he's just talking about, you know, being a noisy eater, waking up, eating breakfast, and then eating lunch, and just eating like he's enjoying the food that he's eating, more so than anyone should. There's some, I guess, some kind of horn that pops up that's sampled. I'm not sure what that is, but it's worked particularly well. The beats here are pretty hard hitting as it kind of adds to the semi-abrasive nature of the chomping that Bismarcky is doing. This guides into the next track, Wildflower, which shouldn't have existed. Which is weird because this is the title track to the album. It's brief and it lacks direction, although I do like the honky-tonk-esque piano intro that comes in on this track. It's not a horrible track, it just seems oddly placed. Then we get the track Harmony, which once again takes a sample, makes it a little lo-fi, and then amplifies it to like a lavish degree. That's one thing I do like about this album. It definitely has the worlds of lo-fi and just great production just come together so seamlessly like they've been brother and sister for a while as if the drugs that they are taking have given them foresight and given them insight into how interconnected they are with one another. I do like that about this album. But yeah, this track, this actually has kind of a Screamadelica vibe. It kind of reminds me of uh, Come Together, but not as long. The track Harmony pretty much talking about, you know, coming together in harmony and harmonic sequence and I think that sentiment works particularly well. Then there's the track Live a Lifetime of Love which I thought I was going to enjoy a lot at first. I do like the core platform of this track as it has like these accordion samples going on. Ariel Pink and Paris Pershun do their thing particularly well. I do like the beats on this track as well as it's kind of bombastic in a way but it just kind of seems like a segue in a way. Like, you get the core of the song before it just kind of divulges into the transition phase, before it goes into park music. Park music being really brief, but for whatever reason, it's actually one of my favorites, given, like, this banjo sampling going on, and there's, like, these lo-fi-ish vocal sustains that is kind of looped particularly well. As it eventually also goes into Living Underwater is Something Wild. It definitely has kind of an aquatic vibe. It's essentially, like, really spacey, down-tempo, neo-psychedelia bliss, once again, that I do like that the album executes particularly well. But then we get The Wazard of Is, which is probably one of the weirdest tracks on the record. It definitely has a sense of multifacetedness to it. It comes in with like this unapologetic vocal sampling that's grouped with like some really hard-hitting drums. And I was really excited to hear Dave Brown rap on this, but he doesn't rap here, except he just has like these ad-libs, like he's patiently waiting for his time to come. And eventually he does come in, but when he does come in, it's like this acoustic guitar going on that sounds like if rap music had a 60s phase. It kind of is now, but like a straight up folkish 60s phase, and I think that's definitely a plus. He just sounds like so charismatic about all this LSD and pills he's talking about taking. Think of the track Over the Turnstiles, which seems kind of out of place given the aquatic vibe that comes up again and I think this probably could have done better either before or after living underwater. It's not bad, it's just like out of place. Then we get the track Sunshine which yeah it sounds really sunny, really bright and really colorful in a way as it like samples some sunshine 
and it kind of loops it like ingeniously well. It's rather orchestral and semi cacophonous in a way. I just wish there was more f uh, to this track than just that. The track Light Up is essentially another brief neo psychedelia detour of sorts. I do like how bright it is, but it just feels really dimwish and I don't see the point of it existing on this album. Then we do get the track Kaleidoscope Lovers, which I do like a lot. It's got kind of a Beatles vibe to it in terms of the vocals. The synth leads are gorgeous. The melodies just shimmer and I just have nothing bad to say about this track. It's like a good chunk into the tracks here. Beautiful, psychedelic, and it's executed particularly well. If only if the shorter cuts were much more fleshed out in this vein. The track Step Kids is pretty cool. It's got this looped sample that works particularly well, particularly of the folk implosions Raise the Bells. The bass is nice and warm. I love the fluttering piano and the fluttering flute that like hangs in the background of this track. And then we get to the closing track, Saturday Night Inside Out, which I feel is easily the most disappointing track on the record. It's not bad. I mean, I do like the instrumental here. The beats are pretty cool. I do like the dynamic back and forth that this track goes for. But it just feels too long. The Father John Misty and David Berman features feel really out there and kind of non-existent and just cuts off like 20 seconds before the album ends and it just wasn't really executed all that well. I feel like it was underwritten. But it does glide the album out somewhat well in terms of just being the closing track, but as a track itself, it's not really a favorite of mine. So overall, I do dig this thing quite a bit. I do think it's a highlight for this month. I just wish that they took more liberties with sampling and they fleshed out some of the shorter tracks a lot more than they ended up being fleshed out at. Regardless, this is definitely a favorite of mine for the month, if not the favorite of mine for the month. The Avalanches had a moment to snag the core following of their fans, as well as the core following of people that love electronic music, people that love psychedelic music, and they succeeded with like this driving, linear, incredibly vast and intricate album. And if you're looking for an album with this vein, you'll definitely want to check this out. Me personally, I enjoyed this thing a lot. Not as much as Since I Left You, but this is definitely the spiritual successor to that album, and I'm definitely going to be looking forward to what trips and what journeys in Plunderphonics, in Psychedelia, and in music in general, the avalanches will bestow upon us all next. This album is a plus 2.5 out of plus 3. I dug this thing. I just wish the tracks that were short were a lot better than they were or just were cut out. But if you give me this album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you like this album? Did you dislike this album? What was your reason for that and what should I consider listening to and reviewing next? CW Music Reviews here, signing off.